Hello and welcome to The Front. This is a quick tutorial on power. Now, before we get started, I'm going to say I'm not an expert on where and how to place these things. I, 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 I don't really know. I know that it seems that the solar panels go from a low to a higher amount of power during the day and then obviously go off at night. I know that you can place them in any direction and they'll get the same amount of power, but you just can't put anything in front of them directly, otherwise they will lose power, even if they're not facing the sun directly anyway. And I know that generators can't be obstructed within a few tiles of them, each other, but it, um, it might be biome dependent, but I'm not sure exactly what determines whether there's insufficient or sufficient it seems that height doesn't affect them anyway that much i do know so they're two of the renewable sources of energy the third source of energy is the diesel generator it says diesel generator but it uses gasoline anyway we won't talk about that oh hello nice to see you here anyway We've got a random friend here for the show. We can, you can stay. What should we call you, Steve? Anyway, these generators, can, you can run them and you can run all of these into couplers. You can run couplers to couplers and basically create a power spine or trunk. And they will, these will combine the outputs into one and you can run one trunk line into many different devices you can run them into different battery banks now a word of caution with this if you have various different generation devices powering different battery banks like here you can see there's that these are full these are not as full but they're okay the two of them putting out 500 produces 999 once it's gone through the coupler to go and power everything. If we put all of these generators into the coupler and then the coupler to a splitter and then that splitter to the same battery bank as another one from the same splitter, it actually doesn't give you the full whack of power coming out the output. I don't know why that is. So basically, think about how you want to measure your power between your batteries in advance. Don't think that throwing everything onto one main cable into batteries is going to do the trick. Now, if you've got enough to generation constantly, you can just go coupler, coupler, and then splitter, splitter. It's not going to make a difference. But if you're looking at battery banks, it will make a difference. With that being said, I'm that's all I'm going to talk about power generation for now. Next, you can run a splitter to a splitter, as I mentioned, ad infinitum. They, they don't, they, you will lose a little bit of power in each one, but they, they don't really mind. Now, I'm going to talk about the inputs, the signal outputs, the resets uh, that you come come from having various different. Uh, devices like counters on the network. Now with the counters you can set a number, let's say 5, and when that reaches 0 it will output the signal based up to the maximum of the input. A button will release a quick blast and timers will release a signal when they are at 0. Now, if you want to put a signal out when it reaches zero, you have to put it through what's called a NOT gate. Again, you need to have for a NOT gate an input and a signal a signal input. The output will be equal to, to the input. So in this setup, we are basically, now we've got zero, there's no output. If we reset this to say, let's say 15. For 15 seconds now, the time comes on. After the 15 seconds, the time goes off. 
and because it's running through an, a not gate it means that's now on therefore it's not timer uh, the counter has gone down because the signal output here is put into a small splitter that splitter is going off to the light to show you that it's on uh, it's going to the count the signal input for the counter which will make it tick down one it's also going to a reset for this what does this timer do it's actually upside down just for the ease of connecting wires we're going to say actually this one is going to be 15 and this one we're going to make it to Five. Um, so when this comes on, it resets the timer below. So that's going to come on for five seconds every 15 seconds. Once that timer reaches zero, it will put out power, which then turns this one on. This one then puts this on, which resets this one as well. So that will then tick down for 15 seconds and that'll stay on for five seconds. So every 15 seconds, we get five seconds of time. That's how you can set sprinklers to come on with a set amount, if you like. Now, this is the way I figured it out. There might be other ways to do it, but this was my preferred choice at the time. There's other things you can do with this, but this is just a, great, a prime example. And then after a few um, ticks, boom, this is now on permanently. You can use this, these counters in various ways. I'll show you how, and then we can reset it using that. And that'll go on for ad for an item. Now the problem with if you're in a solo player world, you log out and you log back in again, that will reset the counter and the timers. I don't know if that's the same for servers. I'm assuming that when they restart, it'll happen the same. Um, I'm hoping if you're watching this, this is a more of an advanced thing. You know about how to use the, how to make and use all of this stuff. Like, for example, having the electrical toolkit pack and being able to run from you know point to point however you need to i'm hoping you are at least aware of them things now i thought we'd have a look at the freezer quickly because the freezer has nine times six slots the refrigerator has six times three which is a lot less now I put these meats in at the exact same time and they've gone down at the exact same rate so the freezer doesn't actually cool things any more than the refrigerator. So on to the circuit breaker. We all know what a circuit breaker is. You put it to the on or the red and the circuit comes on. You flick it down and it cuts it. There is only a single output for this. Now we've seen the button in action. That's how long of a signal you get from it. There you go. The knock gate we saw in action, this is now on, so it's off. We turn it off, it goes on, etc. This is an OR gate, so if this one, or this one, or both are on, then the this will be on. This is an AND gate, so you have to have, as you probably guessed, this one and this one on. If only one of them is on, the light or the signal output won't be on. Fairly simple. Now, here we have an infrared sensor. When you step on the infrared sensor, or something steps across the infrared sensor, you get a signal. That has reset the counter and turned this on permanently. That could be a flamethrower that you've armed to attack people. Now, one thing I will say, and I'm probably gonna have to put a light down for this. Quick no, the arrow shows the arrow of the direction of energy coming out. You click once, you can change the direction of things where they're placing, and click again to place. Right, we're going to take the signal from there, we're going to stick it on there. Now, it activates when someone breaks the beam, but you can, if you're lucky, make it across without your leg actually touching the beam. So as you can see here, we didn't, here we did, here we didn't, here we did, we did, we did, didn't, did. So the only way you're going to guarantee someone breaking this beam in your base is by putting a few of them, maybe two or three. They don't, I don't know, I don't think they use much power. Uh, but yeah, you have to connect them in. It uses one power. So you could probably put a row of these and have them hooked up to just a counter and when they just with a counter with one 
and when when it hits the one, it activates whatever defense, or it could activate a timer for a set amount of time. So your defenses will come on for a set amount of time once that's been hit, um, or until you hit a reset latch on it. There's there's options. So that's the them basic components for you. Now you can also make a pressure plate you step on the pressure plate and it uh, puts out a signal this is an electric door when you put out a signal you can open and close the door so you might want to run through the door into your base now you can you probably wouldn't want to just have this because well it's only 3350 points and a tungsten door for example is 5,000 but you could in theory have this in your base somewhere that you a high traffic area and you could lock the door off using a switch on one side or you could use one of these jobs this is a signal um, what's the technical term for it these days a remote switch a remote switch and these are signal receivers that's the one I'm, I was thinking of if you know the code to a signal receiver in your area, you can turn on and turn off devices. So you could use... Was that the board? That was the board that opened the doors. So this would be a good time to be going, okay, well, I have... That signal receiver there is set to 001. Triple O one, sorry. Zero, 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 one. Um, where's the light? So that's the whole thing. You could have this door hooked up to a pressure plate here, a pressure plate there, and 001 as a signal receiver. And you could say 001 merge and then you could walk in and out of your base as much as you want without having to open and close doors. Thank you. And then you can split, that'll turn off the light and it'll lock your door. And the other thing is, you could do that for all the doors in your base if you want to, all on the one button. Now, is that the safest way to do things? As again, if probably not, you want, you want the stronger doors, probably. But maybe you have stronger internal doors, and these are just out external doors. And when you're home and you're running around, you could have it so that you can just run over them. Because, um, I don't know. They, 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 it, it's there. It's, it's an idea. Anyway, again, split, merge. You can have as many as you want. As long as they're on the right signal, the signal receivers, they work. Now, I don't know if an enemy has a signal receiver, if they can tap into your signals. That's something that I'd have to test with another player. Um, so, unfortunately, that's not something I can tell you now myself. I will try and test that with someone in the future. So, moving on now. We have coolers and heaters basically i'm not entirely sure how these work if anyone's really up to date on how these operate let me know but as you see in the bottom left there's a coldness bar and a heat bar uh when you walk into the room that's on 30 it's actually sitting at 30 in this room i'm nice and okay as i get close to this one it, it, this one's set to minus five you can actually set the temperature on it there you go minus five don't believe what that says on that screen it doesn't it doesn't update as you can see the temperature on the bottom left is actually at that this guy's getting hungry so i'm not going to talk much longer and in this room we have heaters again i'm you can't actually set the temperature on these i think it works per room i don't know i'm getting close to the cooler here and i'm getting cold maybe there's a radius around them it's probably more of a radius around them i think yeah, I think it's based on a radius around them. I'm not sure I have to do more testing on that. Um, but these things, I just wanted to show you these things do exist. These ones you can't set the temperature on. The coolers you can set the temperature on. And if you're going to have a farm, then you want temperature control. You can put this wherever you want it. And that affects the temperature. Lights do affect the illumination. Wouldn't have thought that, you know, I thought they'd have to be UV. 
but anyway, uh, the, the the windows don't affect them at all. Um, and moisture and fertility is something I have to do some more digging into before I can give you the numbers. But this has been Advanced Electrics for you. And again, this might change. It's, it's still in early access, so things might update. And hopefully they fix this where the, the timers will always come back on correctly. The thing is that if it, that depends on time of day and stuff. If you're doing things that are mission critical, I wouldn't depend on timers. Right. This guy's taking damage, so we'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. If you've made it this far, maybe give me a like. And if you want to see more of this thing, these things in the future, please subscribe. If you'd like to see what an XOR or an a NOR gate is, put it down in the comments, and I'll make a video on that, on that kind of thing. It's a little bit more advanced. And if you want any help with any of this stuff, also put it in the comments. I'll see what I can do. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Okay, bye for now.